Now, Harris is coming off a big co-sign from Beyonce, who was basically one of the only cultural figures in America left who has a Taylor Swift-level following. It was a big deal to get her co-sign and a bigger, larger deal to get her doing that rally this weekend. The Houston singer is known for her singing, for her dancing, for her R&B, for her lyrics, and even for her recent dabbling into the country space. She is known and beloved by many voting Americans, many people who are more into music than politics. And she told her followed, followers very clearly with Harris that voting is a powerful tool. For all the men and women in this room and watching around the country, we need you. Your voice has power and magnitude. Your vote is one of the most valuable tools, and we need you. Men across America do not want to see their daughters and wives and sisters and mothers put at risk because their rights have been taken. I see the men here, and I thank you. The men of America don't want this. That was just some of that powerful rally and the appeal. Now, you may recall we headed into the weekend covering these growing objections to the double standard in this race. It is a point that was raised, for example, by Charlemagne in criticizing CNN on their air. This narrative where Kamala Harris is pressed on policy details or word choice or her precise distinctions of what she would do differently from the Biden first term, which are, of course, fair questions. We've asked some of them in reasonable ways, but that that is put on par or on balance with Trump just blatantly vowing to abuse power, to gut the DOJ, cancel his own planned trial, deploy military force inside the U.S., prosecute critics, target American citizens as, quote, enemies, deride America as a, quote, trash heap, threaten the free press, and do all this while hosting blatantly racist, demonizing events, including this almost ineffable rally last night as part of his closing message. Now, we're going to get to that rally in a way, although I won't be airing parts of it on this program, but it was that contrast, which I think is front of mind for many people, which Michelle Obama really laid into at her Harris rally. So I hope you'll forgive me if I'm a little frustrated that some of us are choosing to ignore Donald Trump's gross incompetence while asking Kamala to dazzle us at every turn. I, I hope that you'll forgive me if I'm a little angry that we are indifferent to his erratic behavior, his obvious mental decline, his history as a convicted felon, a known, a known slumlord a predator found liable for sexual abuse, all of this, while we pick apart Kamala's answers from interviews that he doesn't even have the courage to do. Michelle Obama taking what many people have articulated and described as that double standard and using it for fuel, turning it into a rallying cry. And by the way, that's what the political right has done in this country for many decades. Fairly or not, supported by evidence or not, they have waged a simultaneous war of working the refs, attacking the press, and then using that to energize their side. Interesting to hear Michelle Obama, Obama do it in her own way. Now, this brings us to Trump's Sunday night rally in New York City's Madison Square Garden. The campaign billed it, pitched it as some kind of, quote, closing message, but it didn't go well, and it has the Trump campaign reeling in various ways because of the blowback over racist, hateful, sexual, and demeaning remarks by a whole range of speakers. Now, I'm going to tell you what we have deemed newsworthy about this, but I am not going, we are not going to be airing much from the rally on this newscast. And I'll tell you the reason. We try to be transparent. Much of what happened on that rally, especially with the warm-up speakers, and there were many of them, simply does not meet our standards. I will report on some parts of it so you understand exactly what happened if you didn't happen to catch the rally over the weekend. Maybe you were busy living life on Sunday night. I will start with Tony Hitchcliffe, who offered what he billed as jokes, but were claims about how he says Latinos have sex, 
how he dubbed Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage, as the Times put it, how he made a racist reference to black people and watermelon, that speaker alone driving an absolute onslaught of bad press and headlines. And, of course, that not only looks bad, it distracts from what the campaign said was their closing message. Of course, the things that they're getting in trouble for are part of Donald Trump's closing message. He recently himself called America a garbage can for the world based on his views of immigration. He's doubled down on attacking opponents as the enemy within. He did that last night. I can tell you that most of the extreme vile attacks came from the assorted speakers that the campaign had handpicked for their big closing rally. And so one thing that's happening today is a kind of faux distancing from the campaign to its handpicked speakers that's familiar to anyone who's spent any time on the political internet where you see trolls, maybe even people you know, repost some hateful material or just ask insulting questions and then claim they're not endorsing those positions. They're just, you know, putting that bile out into the world. Now, I will summarize, according to reports, some of what we heard without re-airing it. One of those warm-up speakers literally called Harris the Antichrist, another the devil, another saying she had pimp handlers, as a New York Times account summarized, another claiming Democrats are degenerates, low lives, Jew haters, every one of them is that quote. That's a claim that would actually be arguable defamation if you name specific people. Most American Jews are registered Democrats. Kamala Harris is married to a Jewish American Democrat, if, if you want to get into it. But fact-checking this kind of lying venom only takes you so far. The New York Times lead reported that this closing rally, which would have shocked anyone a couple decades back in American life, was a, quote, vivid and at times racist display of the dark energy animating the MAGA movement. Now, as for the campaigning around all this, there are times where Kamala Harris has tried to transcend or glide past the so-called Trump show to make sure she's pushing her own message. There are other times where she's drawn attention to Donald Trump's extremism and hate, saying, take him seriously to voters. That's what she did at their one and only debate, baiting him into certain topics that relate to his conduct that she wanted to draw attention to. And we can tell you with the fallout from this rally today, Harris took that second path, arguing that Trump's extreme rally, with the personal grievances and the hate and the vile speakers, actually confirms one of her core critiques of why she says he is unfit to lead. Donald Trump's uh, event in Madison Square Garden really highlighted a point that I've been making throughout this campaign. Uh, he is focused and actually fixated on his grievances, on himself, and on dividing our country. It is absolutely something that is intended to and is fanning the fuel of trying to divide our country. That fuel to divide us. Well, fuel can power any number of reactions. One of the most popular artists on the planet, Puerto Rican star Bad Bunny, he responded to last night's attack that I just told you about by sending out a new Harris video to his 46 million followers online. Many of them live in the continental United States. They can vote right now, in a legal contrast to the island population. And the comparison was stark to Harris campaigning Sunday at a Puerto Rican restaurant in Pennsylvania, which boasts a voting population of about half a million people of Puerto Rican descent. So now you know a bit about what that rally was like without having to rehear every claim, attack, and supposed joke that was peddled. All right. Now, on the politics of it all, the messaging and the PR of the Trump show, there are people who ask whether every Trump scandal is still a kind of gambit for attention that works in his favor. Is this that? He certainly got attention for the rally. Well, there are clear signs that this is not the Monday that the campaign wanted starting this last full week as votes are already coming in, that these are not the headlines that it wanted. Remember, Donald Trump leads a kind of political style which never apologizes, never walks away from a fight, no matter what he and his team are accused of, including a literal insurrection. That's their mood. We know that by now. 
But here's something you might not have heard yet, depending on how closely you follow the news or your, or your phone today. The Trump campaign has taken the rare step for them of trying to run away from the very speakers it booked for that big rally last night. A campaign aide going on record to now say the line calling Puerto Rico an island of trash, quote, does not reflect the views of President Trump or the campaign. Except that it does. But politically, that is the quote, the sound of a campaign doing damage control, not triumphantly embracing the outrage or the controversy or the spectacle of another over-the-top event that you can't handle and you don't get our vibe and we were just joking and that's just how we are and everyone's PC snowflakes and look at Hulk, isn't he a neat person to choose the next president or whatever? It's not that at all. What they're doing, having assessed the reaction, is what candidates and politicians do. Even someone like Donald Trump, who's always telling you and proclaiming that he's so different. Well, he's been a politician for a minute now. He served in the highest office of the land. He's on his third campaign. He's gotten the hang of running these campaigns in his own way, even if he's never actually won more votes than the other candidate. He's lost the total vote. He's come in second in the total number of American votes both times he's ran. But he and his team do know that when you mess up enough, you're always better off walking away than sticking to it, even if your larger Uber message is you never walk away. And so they're walking away from part of last night. Why is that? And what does that say about both the hate, what the New York Times called the misogyny and racism that was laid so bare last night? What does it say about that and what it takes to do something Donald Trump has never done? which is get above 47% of the country's support.